There's plenty of room at the bottom. That was the name of a lecture given by physicist Richard Feynman in 1959, and I think it best describes the sort of wild aspirations that synthetic biology leader Ginkgo Bioworks offers investors. So why is Ginkgo Bioworks stock sinking following the release of their year-end earnings? Well, the answer to that question requires more thought and research than a cursory look at earnings numbers. So we've produced a lot of research here at Nanalyze. I think we're going on 2,400 research pieces, and of those, 220 have been on nanotechnology and 90 of those on synthetic biology. And our story really starts eight years ago when we wrote this piece, Ginkgo Bioworks Nanobots Are Finally Here. And I just pulled some statements from that piece, and we talk about the book by Eric Drexler called Engines of Creation, where he talks about little machines that self-replicate and can be programmed to solve our biggest problems refers to self-assembling, self-replicating, and self-repairing, where biology builds renewably from the molecular machines inside of cells to global ecosystems. And this is describing the promise on offer from Ginkgo Bioworks. You can actually program any cell, right? So if you look out in nature and you look inside any plant, animal, or insect, in the cell will be code in the form of DNA. And it's what originally got us into technology several decades ago. Now, most recently, last year, we wrote these three pieces on Ginkgo Bioworks because it's a fairly popular stock. It's certainly the most exciting thesis we cover, and arguably, Ginkgo is the leader in synthetic biology. So some takeaways from our 2023 research pieces on Ginkgo. We're purely interested in pure foundry revenues. That's now referred to as cell engineering. So no related party revenue stuff, no RONA stuff. We only want to see cell engineering revenues. And here you can see in the table on the right that they've broken out related parties from third parties. And you want to see that number decreasing over time. And indeed it is. Downstream value. So their business model is such that there's immediate revenues realized up front in today's terms, and there's monies realized downstream for successful commercial products that are produced on the Ginkgo platform. That helps validate that their platform works, and that's a major point of contention that we have with this company. Now, you also need to be wary of non-cash consideration. That was something we covered in our most recent piece on Ginkgo where we looked at a company that's paying them in shares that are being increasingly diluted over time. So Ginkgo has always been able to tell a great story, and we keep reading about that and hoping. Now, if you want to receive our research pieces every week, there's a free newsletter we produce called Nanalyze Weekly. I'll put a link to that in the comments section. When you go to read the comments, please just click that and subscribe to our newsletter, and you'll receive um, the research pieces that we do every week. So Types of revenues coming from Ginkgo. Well, there's related party. These are drawing up, but they don't reflect true platform demand. The idea there is if I took money that I had and gave it to you, and then you gave it back to me to purchase my services and said you were my customer, it's it's more or less a conflict of interest, right? So biosecurity is another type of revenue that we're not interested in. This is the old pandemic pivot. It's not what we're after. We're after the grand story that's being told by Ginkgo Bioworks. So cell engineering can be broken down, as I said, or what used to be referred to as foundry, into services. And the company has said, these are revenues that they recognize year on year, that this is increasingly seen as less important to the business model. In other words, the uh, focus now is on rewards that are coming down the road. So it's becoming more story and less substance. Downstream, therefore, proves the platform can produce useful things. So what does downstream look like? Well, the chart in the upper left here was taken from uh, a recent piece we did on Ginkgo looking at their 2022 results, or at least this piece was from last year. And you can see those blue bars. That's a, a cannabis company called Kronos Group, and they produced these CBD gummies. And our criticism there, you can see that they make up the majority of downstream revenues that they've ever realized is, was that the greatest thing that you could offer mankind so far as some CBD gummies? CBD, they don't even have THC. So not impressed with that and been critical about their lack of downstream revenues. And here you can see on the right, of course, two problems right off. So cell engineering is flat year over year. That's not good. 
And you can see that the downstream revenues they had for 2023, $4 million, whoopee doo. So when we look at milestone opportunities, this is a chart in the recent deck. There's a couple interesting things pop out here. So this excludes royalties. It's just milestones. And of this, you can see the chart 2022 and 2023. Of this, $1.5 billion was added from biopharma companies in 2023. Well, why didn't the number go up by $1.5 billion? It only went up $200 million. That's because a billion dollars was removed due to certain program cancellations. And then in their earnings call, they said a good chunk of that did relate to a single customer. Well, what about the other chunk? And when you have new milestones coming in, what does that do? It resets the starting point. And these are majority from biopharma. Well, it takes a long time for biopharma to get a drug to market, what, seven years on average? This isn't a good thing. Now, when we look at the larger slide that we pulled that chart from, see, they talk about penetrating large biopharma accounts. Note that these milestones are commercial, not regulatory or clinical or technical. The vast majority are commercial, which means you need to be pretty late stage to start realizing those. And the interesting thing here is if you take the chart on the left and you plug it into the chart on the right, you see on the right it says royalties and milestones and then milestones. So that's just that component. So potentially they're going to realize in the future a lot more on royalties. Again, late stage that you actually have to have a product to market and selling it. How long is that going to take, especially if you're resetting that starting point? So when we look at the expectations for 2023 versus reality, and perhaps this might be why their stock was sinking after hours, you see cell engineering, they expected to have over $175 million. Again, the revenues that we care about, what they actually realized, $144 million flat, same as last year. Downstream value contributed to $4 million, and they hesitated to provide guidance on that number, and they did the same that in their 2024 guidance. Not good, right? Uh, revenues in total of $251 million uh, versus their guidance of $275 million, so they missed by 9%. This grand uh, synthetic biology platform that harnesses the power of nature should be growing like mad, not missing guidance. So when we look at 2024 full year outlook, they give us some color as to why they missed guidance. They talk about macroeconomic headwinds continuing to pressure industrial biotech. Okay, perhaps the same thing that we're seeing with companies like Schrodinger, right, which is a piece that we'll be uh, pushing out fairly soon to analyze what's going on there. But when you look at the outlook here, you see, okay, they say cell engineering is going to grow by 22%. Again, no downstream value estimated. And then total revenues are declining by 10%. Okay, your biosecurity, the stuff we don't care about is declining. Fair enough. But uh, this isn't a good thing. We look at cell engineering. They predicted 175 last year, and then they went flat. So this is a look at the revenues we care about a year over year, right? So 2024 estimates, 175. That will be 22% growth. So let's hope that they hit that. Now, when we look at cell engineering revenue, remember I told you we don't care about related parties and we want to be careful of non-cash consideration. We can check these two things, right? You can see here for 2023, related party revenues went down. They're still there, right? But they're less than the previous year. Non-cash consideration dropped as well. That's great, but the fact that it still exists is rather annoying. Now, this is a company with 16 years of history. So now they've gone from having $1.3 billion in cash to $955 million. So they depleted $360 million last year. That gives them about 2.65 years of runway. However, when queried about that during the call, they said, well, cash burn's going to improve in 2024 and then further in 2025. Well, that's great. Now, we need to start seeing some downstream value soon here. And when probed on that, so the analyst correctly asked the question, there were some real softballs in there, but this guy said, all right, you have $2.4 billion in milestones. When can we see that? Give us some idea of when that's coming in, you know, 2025, 2026, and a very evasive answer from management. So the other thing is that they're now making more acquisitions. We don't see that as a good thing. Why not focus on your incredible foundry platform that you've been building for 16 years? How much do you need to supplement that thing? And of course, they're using stock for acquisitions instead of cash. But that also tells us something. So you can see here, 
their shares outstanding increasing over time for various reasons. We'll keep an eye on that dilution. But here, look at this line item here, issuance of common stock for asset acquisitions in 2023. What, 4.7, so under $10 million. What did you acquire for such a small price? What, what a value that's going to affect your, hopefully, the top line. And when you look at the company's you know, focus, they talk about, well, we're shifting our focus to biopharma. Well, they've been at this for 16 years now, and they're, they're shifting. Uh, on the revenue side, they said, we have gone from our biopharma being really just a rounding error a few years ago to making up almost a third of our cell engineering revenue this year. You know what that means? Without bio, biopharma, they'd be really hurting in 2023. So what happened to everything else that they were up to? I don't know the answer to that question. And the other thing that I noted here, and I'm not sure that we've even talked about this before, but where are the cost of goods sold for cell engineering? And if you remember in our recent article on Twist Bioscience, we talked about how their uh, cost of goods sold might be stuffed under R&D spending. And one wonders if that's not happening here with $580 million in R&D spending in 2023. Well, at least that's down from the billion dollars in R&D spending they had in 2022. So it's hard to see how we'd ever invest in a company that doesn't provide us with indications of what gross margins look like. So uh, just some parting thoughts on Ginkgo Bioworks stock. So growth stalled in 2023 as the company pivoted into biopharma and the cancellation of a billion dollars in milestone payments and then uh, $1.5 billion in biopharma milestones added. So that's a net positive change of $200 million. It's not a good thing because that's sort of reset the starting point. So our old concerns that we've had over the years are really being replaced with new concerns. And we'd really love to see some color on COGS. I'd like to hear from our audience if there's any good reasons on why Ginkgo Bioworks should get a pass on not providing COGS for cell engineering. So the plan for us going forward, we'll check back in a year to see how the company's doing. And in the meantime, we're going to continue avoiding the stock. Now, if you're looking for some interesting companies dabbling in the synthetic biology umbrella, you might want to check out Gene Editing Land. And this recent piece that we did on CRISPR stock is rather interesting. So before you watch that, please make sure to go to the comments section, as I said, and sign up for our free newsletter. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.